So today I'm going to put the baggage doors in my 2018 Forest River Vibe. This is the back bunkhouse. I'm going to stick one here. And then this is the main living room area. I'm going to stick one right there. That is the baggage door that's going here underneath of the dinette set. It's a good storage area, but in order to get to it, you actually have to take the whole thing apart, break the whole dinette set down to get to it. So these baggage doors are going to make using what's under the bunk head, the uh, bunk house in the back, the uh, jackknife sofa that's in there, It'll make it a lot easier to fully utilize that storage space that's in there. And this is the baggage door. I'll be going underneath of the back bunkhouse. So right now what I'm going to do, or what I am doing, is getting it centered. One inside I've measured from the window seal here. Down inside that mark is where the floor is inside. So I actually want these baggage doors up far enough just a hair if you look at how the factory ones are installed they have a small gap here so I want to try to stay consistent with that so I can measure out the distance in those gaps and it won't look so noticeable when it's done so now I've came inside and I've measured the width from this panel to that panel and I've drawn me a mark dead center of that. I measured my baggage door and I drew a line center of the width of that baggage door. Now I just have to determine the height. So from the floor inside to the lip of that window edge that's 33 and a half inches so now what I need to determine is the bottom the floor and the camper is about here that's where the floor runs on this there's a lip and there's about mm, three quarters of an inch and this is about three quarters of an inch so over here on this baggage door from the bottom we have about a quarter of an inch so I want to make this the same way I want to leave a quarter of an inch there that'll determine how I get my height so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a template we got some big pieces of cardboard I got my baggage door on here and I'm gonna trace all the way around the baggage door so I have myself a template of the cutout size that I'm gonna need and that will help me line it up a lot better from the inside out the RV is not level as it sits here in the driveway so you can't really use a level and try to level out this is inside dead center on that line that I drew I drew it a hole straight through so I know where the center is now all I need to do is get my height right by putting a template measuring the distance and putting a hole in the template I can go inside know exactly where I want it placed come back out line the hole up Make sure it's about an inch from here up. Trace it out and that's where I'll cut. Okay, so here's where I'm at now. Cut out my template. I drew a line on the width. And I'll set it here. And I'll put that line right in line with the hole 
So now I know where my width is. All I have to do is raise this up an inch on that mark and then measure an inch on another mark, trace around this template and that's exactly where my baggage door is going to go. Okay, so now I got my, I have my template on there, I traced it out, I take the baggage door and I put it on and I get it as close to the line all the way around and I check and make sure that I can see the line all the way around which I can so now I'm ready to actually get my saw and start cutting this is a fiberglass body generally you have aluminum framing in these you have a lot more under the window it's a lot more support than you would on just a regular side so to know where to cut um, I don't think there's any electrical wires or anything in there but the power it is not plugged in the disconnect is turned on so there is no power anywhere not even a 12 volt DC um, I'll start with a, a bit here from the drill and I'll drill in here I'll go inside first and make sure that this isn't going to cut into the seats or anything and be sure and then I'll start here and I'll take my saw and I'll cut a, I'll cut across I may need to put some blue painters tape so that the saw as it goes across it doesn't scrape and scratch this I have a small lip of about three quarters of an inch once this is installed this little flange here will overlap need to make sure it's enough that there's not a massive slice all the way around it or a gouge or a cut so here's a starter hole that I drilled and as I suspected I've drilled through some of the aluminum looks like there's a piece of aluminum here that runs all the way across and you're also going to find you know studs and a sense that go up this way how far I'm not sure but I know they're in there so now I'll just take my swell saw and cut all the way around the outline so here's where we are so far I got two pilot holes I've cut all the way through here which is definitely aluminum piece all the way through there I don't think I hit any uprights I'm not sure it went through like a hot knife through butter so now I'll just cut around here we'll go inside and look at what it looks like inside there's the two pilot holes inside and then you can see the saw mark across the carpet It is perfect right with the floor. So I'll finish cutting out. Get up in here. We may actually cut into some of this. If I feel this slow me down, I'll stop, come in and take that piece out. And then rebrace it up later. Okay, so I got the cutout done. You can see where I cut over a little bit here. Didn't get it as rounded. That does show a little bit. I went in with my shop back and uh, got all the shards out. Make sure you wear safety glasses or safety goggles if you can see all this fine powder. That stuff is bl just blow right up in my face. So make sure you protect your eyes when you're doing this. This is fiberglass. You don't want to breathe this stuff in either. Uh, don't see any other than this metal piece here, oh, or excuse me, aluminum piece. I don't see any other aluminum framing in this whole cutout. I hope I get that lucky for the back one. This is only 24 inches. The back one's 36 inches, so I'll be going 12 inches wider. It is a tad bit crooked. 
from here I go across it's a little bit unlevel and if you're if that catches your eye enough and you want to cut it down a little bit more you can keep doing that and and get it to kind of shift a little bit to make it perfectly level but I don't think it's noticeable enough to be concerned about I'll take my putty tape put that around put this in but I believe what I may need to do is cut out some of this fiberglass here so that I have something to bolt it down to so it's not moving I'd rather not bolt through here here it may work out better if I do it that way but you can see where the the scroll saw I taped put some of my painters tape on the saw to kind of protect it from scuffing it up too bad so it doesn't look too bad uh, this is a good opportunity to get you some Windex or something and get this cleaned up real good before you put your putty tape on it and finalize your door there okay so here is the finished door number one once I get them both put in I'll go put my lights in I even put the magnets on it to hold it open here and one there I like those a lot better than the flip latches To here, the bigger one, 36 inches. What I did on this is I put a double row of the putty tape and I put me some C clamps. I had them clamped in and pulled it down as tight as I could to get this against it. And then I drilled one hole here, one hole here. There is a screw hole there and there. And you want to push this in as far as you can get it. And put clear silicone caulking just to help seal it to make sure that there's no water that gets in there because you definitely don't want mold over time when this dries this might get a little bit uh, dirty looking not sure if it'll stick out like a sore thumb but I'm happy enough with it to go ahead and move on with the second door so here's the second one holes all cut out and again surprisingly I didn't run into any studs or uprights. Just this piece of aluminum on the bottom. So I dry fitted the door fits. I'm going to put the putty tape around it. Push it in. So I got my putty tape I put on the edge. It comes in different widths. You can get it as wide as you want it. The first roll I had left over from a couple years ago, it seemed to be exactly the perfect width. And I had to break into the new roll, so it's got overhang, which isn't a big deal because you can cut it off. So I like to leave it sit in the sun for a few minutes and let it get real warm and tacky. Then when I put it on, I'll show you how I put the C-clamps on it so I can push it against the side so that it bonds here all the way around as 
tightly as possible for watertight seal. Alright, so I got it in. Here's the C-clamps I put on. Just clamp them in there so that it pulls this as tight against the trailer as possible. And I leave that sit about 10-15 minutes and every couple three minutes I'll come and just give it another squeeze and make sure it's as tight up against there as possible. Got my magnets on this one. So as you can see on this first door on the inside, I got pretty lucky as far as mounting on the top because I have the framing work from the U-seating but under the bunkhouse I don't have any framing so I'm just going to add this here with a screw here 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 and then I can run a couple of screws from this lip that will secure the top from moving a couple of screws should be fine no big deal just enough to keep it from wanting to fall back out it'll keep it pulled tight against the side of the trailer outside now this is all storage I can use from outside access okay so not much longer to go just need to take my razor blade and cut here trim this access off do that all the way around and then I'll put some clear caulking, seal this off just the side, the top, and this side. I don't do anything on the bottom because if there is water that gets back there, I want it to be able to run around and come out of the bottom. I don't want it to hold water anywhere in there. Again, this is right on the floor, so that would start rotting out the floor underneath there, which I don't want. So I got three screws. And the bottom and I've got a screw here and a screw here and this is plenty tight this isn't going to come off it's not going to move these I'm going to replace these this door is brand new so is that door the original door on there I put these on last year and September or October and already these are broken off they just dried out completely fell off and you can see where it's cracking maybe on here you can see the rips in it don't even waste your time with those things so I looked online and I found these ones they seem to be a lot more durable so I'm going to replace those with this see how long these will last dust dust caps to keep dust out of here I changed out my 751 locks and went with these I think I mentioned in a previous video so now I have three four four storage compartments and the outdoor kitchen all runs off the same key now so here's the baggage doors all completed now I'm just going to run my lights for in there and operation baggage door will be done